Okay, awesome. So thanks everyone for jumping in today. And uh, thank you, Eli, for you know coming in. I would say flying in, but in this case, from your computer, right? <laughs> so uh, for everyone who is tuning in, uh, we're going to give a couple minutes here uh, to get started. Uh, in the meantime, we'll just do some uh, quick introductions. Uh, so my name is Jedi Weller. I'm the uh, founder of OpenForge, a uh, huge Ionic fan. Our entire team is. And we run the Philadelphia uh, Ionic Meetup Series, which is now going remote and going digital because of you know current climate and current events. Uh, so we're going to be having a, a couple online uh, meetups for everyone. Uh, I think the next one is actually going to be uh, Ionic and Phaser. Uh, so we'll, uh, if anyone is interested in game development uh, with Ionic, I know it's not something you hear uh, very often. Uh, so we'll be uh, talking about that. And also afterwards, I will email everyone with a follow-up with any resources that Eli has. Uh, and with that said, I'm not gonna take up any more time. Uh, I will be uh, managing the questions. So if you guys have questions, please just raise your hand through Zoom uh, or use the webinar chat. And I'll, uh, you know, maybe if it's a really relevant question to the, to the topic, Eli, do you prefer if we wait everything to the end or do you prefer like live uh, questions? Uh, maybe I'll stop. Um, part of the way through, see if we have any questions, um, okay. maybe between the slides and the demo, and then at the end, take some more. Okay, cool. That sounds good. Um, so yeah, so Eli, do you want to you start us off with the intro, and I'm going to make you the main presenter here. Absolutely. Well, I just want to say thank you very much for having me. I'm super excited to be here. Always wanted to uh, visit Philadelphia. Um, oh, I just come on video. Hold on. <laughs> he, he didn't want to show the... Uh, yeah, you know, his excitement. About right. <laughs> um, so, I mean, usually when I go someplace to speak, I like to take a tour around town and stuff. I've never been to Philadelphia. I've been super excited to go. So since we're doing a virtual meetup today, I think like maybe I had to do like a, a virtual tour of Philly, right? Yeah. Maybe we so, <laughs> you know, I kind of, kind of went and saw some sites. Super of cool. Course, and then, yeah. Of course. You know, I had to get in there and uh, see the Rocky statue. Um, and I got this one too. Let's see, how, how well does this work? If anybody see, this is kind of the one that's been famous and gone viral. Yeah. <laughs> awesome, all right, that's enough fun with Zoom. Gotta get a few Zoom things in, right? All right, let me share my screen here. And Get those off. All right, is everybody seeing my slides? I will take that as a yes. All right, so everybody, thank you for coming. Um, this is uh, building uh, mobile and progressive web apps using Ionic and React. And so I am uh, Eli Lucas. I'm a software developer at Ionic. I love all things web and mobile dev. And for the about the past year and a half or so, I have been like really focused heads down working on Ionic React. And I'm excited to share with you today uh, some of the stuff that we got going on. Uh, so first off, I know this is the Ionic Philly meetup group and a lot of you are probably very familiar with Ionic, but for those of you that probably just, you know, found a Zoom link and stumbled on into the meeting, what is Ionic Framework? Well, our mission at Ionic is like to really enable uh, web developers to be very efficient at creating mobile and desktop applications. And so to do so, we created the Ionic Framework, which is a cross-platform cross UI toolkit for building native mobile desktop uh, and web apps uh, using the web tech you already know and love. So kind of an interesting stat here is that Ionic is actually immensely popular. It's right now it's powering over 10% of the apps in the Apple and Google Play stores. We got a link there showing those, uh, where those stats came from. And not only that, but we have the, a huge vibrant community. So it's used by more than 5 million developers. And so what that means for you is that if you like choose to use Ionic, uh, you know you're in good company. You know there's lots of companies out there using it. You know the, the community's out there big, um, ready to give a hand for you. Not only that, we're also backed by a growing company. So Unlike some other framework alternatives out there, um, we didn't develop Ionic for ourselves to use for ourselves. We actually developed Ionic for you, the developers. And so we really listen to your feedback and we try to implement features and everything that you guys need. So what is Ionic React? 
Well, really, it's a React, React wrapper around the Ionic framework. It includes hundreds of components, um, some of which you'll probably never use, but most of which you'll probably use quite a bit, and you'll find them immensely helpful in creating um, applications. And then you can use it to uh, build uh, the cross-platform native quality apps. And so what we mean by this is like you can build iOS apps and you can build Android apps and you can build web apps. And the most important thing here is that it's a single code base. And so you, you can take the one code base that you wrote and deploy it to all the different platforms and Ionic will uh, work across all of those. And in the end, like really Ionic React is just React. And so because of that, it's compatible with the majority of uh, React libraries and tools out there. Underneath the covers, we use React scripts and create React app um, to gener generate the application for you. So if you're familiar with those types of tools, you're going to be um, familiar with what we have here. But why React? And so like I said a little bit earlier, that our mission is to empower web developers. And so if we go back in a little bit of history of um, Ionic, um, we were initially really focused on Angular. In fact, Ionic was originally built in Angular. And that's because at the time, like AngularJS was like hugely popular. It was actually a great bet and great investment for us to uh, go along with the Angular community. But as web standards started to progress and specifically like web components started to come out and we started to look like what the future of Ionic was gonna look like, we noticed that if we could actually rewrite the Ionic framework, in web components, then we would have um, the ability to not only work with Angular, but all these other frameworks as well. And so that's what we did with uh, version four of Ionic. We rewrote it all in web components. And then now we have wrapper libraries that take those web components and make it look and feel and act like the um, JavaScript library that you're using it in. And so we're excited because now we've had Angular for a long time, but now we're able to offer the same thing to React developers as well. So let's talk a little bit about the Ionic platform. And so it's not just the Ionic framework. We offer an end-to-end -end platform for building um, applications. So it starts with the Ionic framework, and this is the open source, completely free, cross-platform UI toolkit. Um, Ionic framework, well, like I said, it's completely free and it will always be completely free, and you can continue using it. But on top of that, we have some other applications as well. We got uh, Capacitor, which is our native runtime. And so if you're familiar with Ionic from the past and you've done Ionic um, work, you might be familiar with uh, Cordova. And so Ionic Capacitor is kind of like our um, reimagining of Cordova. Uh, it's something that we built so that we can use and we can control the entire um, app building process. Um, so what Capacitor gives you, it allows you to wrap up your web application into a native binary and deploy it to the stores but it's also a native runtime bridge that you can use to talk to plugins and your own code that you write to talk to devices specifically. And then we also have Ionic Native. And Ionic Native is a set of uh, premium plugins that you can use to access specific um, pieces of the device hardware. And so this works with Capacitor and it also works with Cordova but this gives you abilities to talk to like the camera or the contacts list or the GPS and accelerometer, those types of things. And then we have Ionic App Flow and the Ionic App Flow is our software as a service for doing mobile DevOps. Um, this allows you to do mobile um, cloud builds and continuous integration um, for your apps. So let's talk a little bit about some of the UI components that we have here. So like I said, we've got hundreds of different types of components here. Uh, let's check out one like um, the action sheet. And so you'll notice here, I'm here in the action sheet and I'm popping it up and I'm currently in iOS mode. I'm gonna switch over to Android mode here and pull up the action sheet. And you can see that uh, the framework actually morphs itself to look like the platform that it's currently running on. We also have powerful theming support. So if you have a specific color brand for um, your company, or if your apps look a specific way, um, you can use Ionic's theming ability to go on that. And this is built off of CSS variables. And so one way to quickly demonstrate this is I can enable dark mode uh, for the specific app. And you can see that we basically switch out a style sheet 
uh, to turn it into dark mode. Um, the adaptive styling, that's what I was showing you with um, switching between iOS and Android. And then we also have native style navigation. And this is something that's really powerful. And if you really want your app to feel like it looks and belongs on the system that it's running on, you really need to nail down the navigation and the animations and transitions that happen there. And the Ionic framework takes care of that for you. So I'll show you here real quick. I'll come down to the uh, tab sample. And so if you notice here, like if I go back and forward, you're getting that nice iOS style navigation and then iOS style um, tab navigation. If I click over to Android and go down and do it, now I'm getting all those um, animations and transitions that look, look, look and feel like they belong on Android. So how does Ionic Framework work? Well, in the end, um, all it is is just a uh, React. And so what you're gonna do is you're going to import our components into your uh, JSX file or TSX file. Uh, we kind of really love TypeScript at Ionic. So usually what you'll see from us is TypeScript TSX stuff first, but just know if you're a JavaScript developer, Ionic React works great in JavaScript as well. But you just import the components and you start using them. And then for routing and navigation, under the hood, uh, we use a React Router. And so we have our own wrapper around browser router, and that's this Ion React Router. So you want to make sure that you start your application off using Ion React Router. And this takes the place of what you would usually put in for React Router. But then after that, you're just using React Router like you normally would, defining different routes with paths and the components that will go. And so here we got a few different routes defined. and um, you know, like in that people details route, we have a parameter going into it and whatnot. So from here, it's just this. And the reason why we have a wrapper, the Ion React Router wrapper around React Router is because in order to do those transitions and page life cycles and make it really performant, we kind of need to take over the uh, rendering of the application to determine like when stuff goes, gets unmounted and mounted and whatnot. And so Ion React Router does that for us. And then one of the big advantages that you get when you're using Ionic React versus um, some of the other popular uh, mobile frameworks out there is that you can also deploy your application as a progressive web app, same code base. Um, because we are using web technologies here, in the end, what we have is actually a website. And so we can run our, or we can build up our website and deploy it to a um, static hosting site like uh, now and have it up and running as a progressive web app. And Create React app comes with some um, service worker stuff built out of the box. And so just with a, a simple switch, you can be up and running in a progressive app, app uh, fairly quickly. Uh, to get started with Ionic is really easy. To go to the traditional route, uh, you can install our CLI. Um, so npm install at Ionic forward slash CLI. And then run the start command, Ionic start my app dash dash type React to get started with React. Or we also have this new application wizard. And uh, this, this is really fast and easy to get started with. What you do is you go there, uh, you fill out like a quick little wizard, you give it your app name, you pick a theme color, an icon for your app, and then it will give you a command that you can run um, to generate your application fairly quickly as well. All right, Jedi, we got any questions so far? Not yet, nope, you're good to go. All right. Well, so let's go ahead and hop into a demo to see how this stuff actually works. And so I'm going to tell you a little bit about our demo. And so I'm a parent. Uh, I got four kids. And, you know, most of the time, um, they're a joy to be around. They're like this, right? And then some of the times, it's like this, right? It's just chaos. Um, and so my wife and I came up with this system. It's a reward system. We're like, hey, we're going to give you a reward for doing something good. Um, we call it warm fuzzies. And so they, got, they each got their jars and warm fuzzies are pretty much like little colored cotton balls. They do something good. Uh, we throw one of the cotton balls into their jar. They collect so many, they get something special like a movie night or a special dessert or something like that, right? And so we had the system up and running. And as I'm always thinking of ideas for new apps to build, I'm like, wow, how can I take this like perfectly good running system that we have and like ruin it with technology, right? <laughs> no, just joking. 
Um, but I thought like, hey, it'd be kind of cool to digitize this. So let's uh, build an app to do uh, um, this uh, kid point system that we have going on. And so uh, that's what we're gonna build in this uh, demo here. And I'll go ahead and switch over to the command line here and I called it kid points. And this kid points app, it is a, I already have some of it um, scaffolded out here for us and I'll go ahead and show you everything I did. But the initial commands that I ran were um, ionic start, type react, I started up a blank application template and then I installed some additional dependencies that we're going to need. Um, I installed, I, I made sure ca capacitor um, was installed and then capacitor iOS was installed as well. And then I'm using um, a project called PWA Elements. And this is something else that we offer that um, ties in with capacitor to um, fill in some of the missing UI pieces that aren't available on um, desktop web browsers. For instance, like if you're gonna go take a, um, a picture with the camera, there's like no UI to do that. So this provides the UI for that. And I also have this React Hooks uh, project. And React Hooks, this is kind of a, uh, a, a community-based library. We don't offer like any real support around it or anything like that, but it's a set of helpful uh, hooks, React Hooks um, that you can use that ties into the capacitor APIs that makes doing stuff like taking a picture with the camera super simple to do. So I've got that up and running. Um, the first thing that we're gonna do, let me actually fire up the app here. So we'll do npm run start to get it up and running. Now I'm gonna come over here and I'm going to open up the developer tools. And I like to run in device emulation mode. And so that's this little icon right here. And this, and depending on what you select right here, we'll get the, uh, the device frame and tell the particular application what type of app you, you are. And so right now I just have this home screen that just says kids. And if we go look at the home file here, and so this is our basic template. Um, every um, page in an Ionic application, an Ionic React application is gonna start with this Ion page. And these are the different types of elements that we have inside of it. So we have our header and then we have the content. And so um, that's what we have right now is basically the header that says kids. The first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna add a button um, that will let us open up a modal to add a kid into um, our application. And so in here, got a bunch of snippets here so you don't have to see me type a bunch of code. Um, so I just inserted this um, ion buttons into the toolbar that's in the header um, with the ion button that's gonna show an icon and the icon is gonna be the add icon. And so I'll come over here and I'll use Visual Studio Code to add the missing imports that it finds. And then if you've used um, Ionic with Angular and you've used Ion icons before, um, the way that we use icons in React is a little bit different. So instead of specifying the string, uh, what you actually do is you import the icon from the Ion icons project. And so we'll say import add from Ion icons slash icons. And then when we click on this, we're going to call this method called uh, show kid, a show add kid modal. And what this is, this is a piece of state. And so we're going to use the use state hook in our page here. And so we'll call this um, show kid modal. And then we'll have the set show kid modal. The use state and we'll default it to false. So when we click on this, we're gonna um, set that to true. And down here at the bottom of the page, I'll add in a snippet for the modal. Import. Oh, this should be show add kid modal. There we go. And so um, the way that we control modals inside of Ionic React is you specify a prop on the um, Ion modal 
components. And so that's what we have here is, is open. So if this is true, it's gonna open the modal. And if it's false, it's gonna keep it closed. And just to see what that looks like here real quick. Um, or run, and if we click it, you can see the add form here popping up. Cheat sheet, let me make sure I don't skip anything. All right, so in here, um, what we're going to do next is create the add form, um, the add kid form. And so I'll come up here and I'll say new file, specify components, slash add kid form.tsx. And I'll use a snippet to paste this in. And let's go over this real quick. Let me make that a little bit bigger. And so here, um, since we're still showing a modal here uh, and not a brand new page, we're not using the parent ion page um, component, but we're still kind of have the, the basics of what makes up an ion page. And so we got the header shown add kid, and then we got the content. Um, and then we got a list with uh, particular items in it. And so here we got our form uh, with a couple of ion in Every time it changes, uh, we're going to set the name to the value. And so one thing you might notice that's a little bit different with an ionic input is that instead of an on change event, we have an on ion change event. And so you want to make sure that you um, subscribe to that event instead of on change for um, any values that change in there. And then we got a button to um, add the kid and a button to cancel. And so we can go back over here to our homepage now and take this add form here out and actually use that new component. And something that I really like about TypeScript here is that it is currently shown that something's wrong with our add kit form. And so if we take a look at uh, the error, it's gonna say property on close is missing in type. And so over here in our form, uh, we're actually specifying a interface to define the um, properties that this component is gonna take. And we're defining this onclose method that needs to be passed in. And so this is something about TypeScript when you're using it with React that's gonna let you catch errors and stuff as you're actual developing, um, where if, like you were just using JavaScript, you could use prop types, but normally you wouldn't find those types of errors until you, you run your application. And so we'll specify this onclose method. And we will just call this uh, set show add kid modal and set it to false as well. And now that is up and running. We'll go ahead and let that recompile and click it. And now we got our form to add a kid. So we got our input for name, our input for goal, an add button and a cancel button. Now, one thing we wanna do here to make this a little bit more app-like is we wanna be able to uh, take a photo of our kid. And so their profile or their kid is associated with a particular um, photo for them. And so to do that, we're gonna tie into the capacitor APIs and we're going to use that React hooks library that I talked about earlier to make accessing the capacitor API super simple. So I'm gonna import, um, the use camera hook from Ionic React hooks for such camera. And here, the way that we're going to use this is very similar to how we use the use state um, hook. And so the use camera hook gives us back uh, two, two properties. It gives us back the photo and it gives us a back a method to take the photo. And down here, oh, I added this to the wrong file. I needed to add this to the kit form. Let me move this over here real quick. This is supposed to be a part of the form. There we go. Okay, now this photo button here, I'll go ahead and take out that placeholder and use a snippet to paste in this button. 
and import this couple of things in that we need from capacitor. And let's go over this real quick. So we've got, we've got um, an IM button. And when we click on it, we're calling into that get photo method. And we're passing in an options object where we're telling it the, the result type that we want back is a data URL. And this is going to give us a base64 encoded string that we can set to the source of an image um, to display the photo uh, that we take it from the photos. So if a, so it can open up their photo roll if they're on an actual device or you can have them be able to pick what they want to do if they want to take a photo or if they want to open up their photo roll. And the quality of the image we're sent into 100. Um, the image comes back as a JPEG. And then down here, if we have the photo, we're going to go ahead and show it. And if we don't have the photo, we're going to show an icon, um, a camera icon that they can use to take it. So I'll go ahead and import that camera icon. And if that is going, We've got that camera icon, go ahead and click on the image. It's gonna pop up the UI that I was talking about. It wants to use the camera, I'll tell it yes. So cheese, and then hit okay. Um, you can see that the image is a little bit distorted because I had a 16 by nine image. It's getting shrunk down into a square. So a little bit more code, I could crop that image to get it in there and stuff, but um, that's how it looks right now. Great. Now what we need to do next is save. Um, this kid, when we hit the add button, we need to save it into um, a, a, some type of storage. Something else that I have pre-baked into this app is this data service. And this data service, all it really does is it kind of manages the kids for us. It has the, a get kids method, an update kid, and an add kid. And all this is really doing is um, putting stuff into local storage and taking stuff out. You could definitely get a lot more sophisticated with this. This could be calling into backend services or it could be using something other than local storage, um, whatever have you. But you know, this is uh, uh, good for our demo purposes here. And so we wanna call into the add kid method when um, everything is filled out. We're doing some very simple um, validation here. We're just making sure name has a value and goal has a value. So I'll put, add this into here and import that. And so we're calling add kid name. Uh, we're parsing the, um, the string value of goal into an integer and then we're passing in the image if we have one. And then we're closing the modal. Now, if we do that, now we should actually be able to go in here and add in a real kid. And I'll just go ahead and use my image. Fortunately, not all my kids uh, look like me, so but they're all going to for this particular demo. Okay, now we're back at the uh, kid screen, we close the modal, but we're not doing anything right now on this particular home screen uh, to display them. So let's go ahead and fix that. And while you're doing that, there's a question that was popped up uh, that I think is related to right now, which is which storage API can we use for all platforms that are supported? I mean, so anything that's supported in the web, um, is gonna be supported. So local storage is your most basic one or session storage. Um, you also have access to um, IndexedDB and WebSQL in some cases, even though we don't really recommend that anymore. And if you're actually running on a device, um, you can get a little bit more sophisticated with your storage. So you can tie into like SQLite or whatever, um, th those kind of um, implementations. Uh, CouchDB has a database that you can use um, on device, but you can also like tie into something like Firebase or store everything in your own, uh, behind your own API and whatnot. Okay, so over here in the home screen, I wanna uh, um, set up a new piece of state that's going to store uh, the list of the kids that comes back from our data service. And so we'll just call this kids and we'll call it uh, set kids. And this is gonna be an array of kids. And so here we'll set the default to just an empty array. And then because we're using TypeScript, we're going to pass in a generic parameter here to type this array as a kid array.
it's right here. Um, it's just a very simple interface around the stuff that we already have, name, goal, count, and image if we have one. And then uh, what we want to do when the, when the page loads, we want to uh, load the kids from the service and store them in this state. Um, so typically in React, um, you have, you could use a use effect hook uh, to do this to kind of simulate a component did mount from a React class type stuff. But in Ionic, we actually provide our own lifecycle methods. And you might find these actually a little bit more useful than using something like use effect. And that's because um, this uh, will be called anytime that you enter this particular page. And so to use our lifecycle events, we've got hooks for them. And so we'll say use ion view uh, will enter. We got four different ones. We got will enter, will leave, um, did enter and did leave. And these are called based on if there's a transition being happening, um, they'll be called at the appropriate place. If there's no transition, they pretty much get called at the same exact time. And so we'll say use ion view will enter and we'll pass in a method here. And then we'll just call in this get kids method that I'll import from the data service. And we'll set those kids to the state. And then down here in the content, what we want to do, so we'll see if uh, there's any kids. And so we'll say kids.length. And if there is, then we'll, you know, kids go here. And if there's not any kids, then we'll display a message that uh, says add some kids. And if we go back to the app right now, you can see right now we do have a kid in the database. And so we got the kids go here. We wanna replace that though with the, an actual list that's going to show the kids. And so I'll paste this guy here. I am list. And for each of the kids, uh, we're mapping this over and we're returning back an ion item for each of the kids in the list. Now an ion item um, is a way to kind of structure um, stuff in, in a list. And so here we got, if there's an image, we're gonna show an avatar and then we'll show a label with the kid's name and the kid's goal. And at the end um, of the label um, as specified by the slot here, we're gonna show a ion chip uh, which is kind of like a, a circle with the number inside of it, very common for like notifications and whatnot. We're gonna show uh, the current count that they have. So we'll look here, so we got awesome. We're showing the avatar and the current count is zero. Okay, so let's go ahead and add in another kid here real quick. My other boy is named Liam. We'll set his goal to five. And take another photo. Oh, you can see here, though, that when we came back to the screen, that um, nothing appeared. And this is kind of a nuance. Um, so when we open up a modal, it, it's actually opening up a modal over the page that we have right now. And so we're never leaving the home page. And so when we close the modal, that ion view will enter is not being called because we never left. So what we want to do here is when we do, or when the modal gets dismissed, we want to make sure that we call, um, that we get a new set of data from the service. So we'll call set kids and then we'll get the kids from the service. And now let's say that Bailey Baylor. That's kind of a cool name too. Bailey. And we'll have her have no image. So now when we oh, when we come back and the, and that modal is dismissed, we fetch a new set of kids and update the list of them. Okay, so now we got a list. Uh, we wanna be able to go to uh, the details for them where we can update their particular count of uh, points that they have. And so to do so, we're going to add a new page. And so I'll say new file, 
and we'll call this uh, kid detail PSX. And I am going to use a snippet I created here to create Ionic pages really fast. And we'll call it kid detail. Names as their identifiers, which isn't what you would want to do for a real app, but hopefully you don't have kids that have the same name. Um, so you should be safe in this particular instance. Um, but we're going to pass it in as a uh, URL parameter. And so to get that, uh, first thing that we're going to do is we're going to extend our interface of the props with the route component props. And route component props. And that's going to be imported from React Router. And then we're going to specify that um, the params is going to have a name that's going to be of type string. And so we can pass in match into here. And so this is just a standard React Router stuff right here. So anytime, um, if you pass in the uh, React Router props, one of the pro um, properties on there is called match. And this will give us back the data for the params. And we'll just um, output the name for right now. Okay, now we got this page. We need to be able to route to it though. So let's go back over to where our routes are defined. And I will just duplicate this line right here for the home route. And I'll set the path to be kid. And then we'll pass in name as a named parameter. And the component will be the kid detail screen. Now to get to the screen, if we go back over to the home page, up here in the ion item, what, what we want to do is when we click or tap on the ion item, we want to load into the new page. And so you could use an on-click handler and call into React Router's history API, but we provide a uh, property here that will do that for you. It's called router link. And so all you have to do here is specify the string that you wanted to go to and it will take care of the navigation uh, for you. So we'll say slash kid slash and then we'll pass in the uh, oh, I need to make sure to use back ticks for my string. Kid dot name. There we go. That reloaded so I can click on Austin. So you can see I got Austin. We're on the kid detail, but you can see we have no way to get back to the home page. Um, so what we can do is add a, a back button up here in the toolbar. And so if we go back over to detail and come in here into the toolbar, uh, we'll add an ion buttons container. And we'll give it a default href. So if you happen to land on this page and it doesn't know how to get back, uh, we'll tell it where to go by default. Oh, I added that to the wrong place. Hold on. There we go. Okay, so now we got a back button. So we can click back and it takes us back to the um, previous screen. And so you can see here, right now I'm emulating an iPhone 10, and so we're getting the, the nice iPhone type um, animations that uh, we know and expect from iPhone. If I come over here to Android, just to show this again real quick and refresh, you can see I'm now getting Android style uh, navigations and back buttons. Okay, so back here in our And what do we got next? Okay, here in the kid, kid detail screen, I'm gonna insert this method in here called load. And what this is gonna do is it's going to uh, call the get kid method from our data service and pass in their name. And this will return back to the particular kid and then we'll call a uh, set kid, which will be a state variable. And so I'll add that here. And 
then we'll type it as a kid. Um, ion view will enter to call that load method. Now, the reason why I broke out load into its own method here is we're going to call it from a few different places. And then down here, we'll go ahead and get rid of this name and I'll insert this uh, progress container. And what this is going to do is it's going to show a circular progress bar um, to show like how close they are to get into their goal and then a couple of buttons to modify that bar. Now, this is one of the things that I really like about using Ionic React is that the entire like React ecosystem is available to you. And so I was thinking when I was thinking about the UI for this particular application, I was like, yeah, having the circular progress bar would be really cool. All I had to do was go out and search for React circular progress bar. I found this, uh, I found this particular one and I'm able to add it just because all it is is web technology. I'm able to add it into my app and continue um, to use it. So I'll add the icons and then up here for some reason, VS Code doesn't um, know where this is at. So I have to add it manually. React circular progress bar and then in order to use this, I need to add a couple of um, CSS imports. And so oh, I'm going to add a file here. Now in React, if you're a React developer, you know that there's um, quite a few different ways to handle uh, CSS in your app. Um, I'm going a simple way here. I'm just using plain old CSS and I'm going to import it into my file. But if you're used to like a um, CSS and JS framework, like styled components or something like that, just know like if you want to use those, it works perfectly fine in Ionic React as well. And then to scope it, I gave it a ID here. So I think it's called kid detail page. Yep, kid detail page. All right, and that should be good. So let's go check out the app again real quick. Now you can see that we have on the, a nice circle here with a couple of buttons. The buttons don't do anything yet because we haven't uh, hooked up that logic. So let's do that now. Okay, so I'll come up here and I got this uh, add remove methods. And so we're, what we're doing here is we're adding a point or removing a point based on which button that we click on. I'll import that from the service and then down here on the button. So the remove button, I'll say on click. And then pass in the kid and then just the opposite for the add button. Okay. And then the last thing we want to do here is we need to tell uh, the progress bar it takes in a value. And this is the percentage that that should be um, added in. And so we'll add a state variable called percentage. go and then here in the load method I got a snippet here for it uh, we're going to set the percentage and it's basically like the count divided by the goal times 100 uh, to make it a whole number and instead of zero here we'll specify the percentage And there we go. Now, every time we fill it up, it's going to fill up that uh, progress bar. And then we got some safeties in place that don't let us go above or below 
um, the count. So it's cool. Um, we can tell now when the kids uh, reach their goal, um, they get something special, but um, we like to do a type of celebration for them when they hit their uh, when they hit their goal. We like to make a big deal about it. And so we're going to do the same thing here in the app. And so for our particular app, what we're going to do is like show some fireworks and and whatnot for them, uh, something fun. And so I will go ahead. to draw them myself or whatnot. And so I went out and searched and found, this isn't even a React component. This is just a, uh, uh, an NPM module that uh, will shoot off fireworks inside of a uh, Canvas element. And so, um, but because we're using web technologies and we're using React, it's uh, pretty simple to put this together. So I'll paste this in here. And so this is the fireworks component. And so down below, uh, what it needs is it needs a uh, div um, that it's going to um, attach itself to. And basically it adds a canvas element into here and starts drawing inside of it. Uh, we make sure that uh, we set the background to black and that it takes up the entire screen and whatnot. And then we use a ref uh, because that's what it needs when we actually fire it. So we use this use effect hook to um, fire this off when the component loads. This isn't an Ionic page here, this is just the component. So we're not using Ion view will enter, we're using React's use effect hook. Um, some options for the fireworks, and then we just call fireworks canvas, um, tell it to start. Um, I also have this MP3 file for some fireworks sounds. Um, I tell it to play, and then it goes for five seconds, and then it stops. And to do this, here is we'll have another state variable called um, show celebration. And this will be a Boolean value that um, will have a default value of false. And here in the add point below load. So if they reach their goal, uh, we want to show it. And so we'll say if the kid count equals the goal, uh, we're going to show the celebration and then we'll do a little set timeout. And then five seconds later, uh, we'll set it back to false and it will go away. And all we have to do is show it conditionally, depending if show celebration is true or false. Use the fireworks. Um, check and see. I need to import that. All right, and I think that should be good. Okay, so now if we go down to four, we'll go up to five. Got some fire rush to show for him. There we go. And I don't know if you're able to hear the sound there or not, but the, the MP3 played as well. Yeah, yeah, we were able to hear it. <laughs> I mean, awesome. You got a comment in the uh, in the chat too saying that's very it's very nice. <laughs> <laughs> Any oh, other questions or yeah. So also someone asked if they could get the name of the package that was being used. Uh, which one? I believe the fireworks. Yeah, fireworks. Okay, yeah, so the fireworks, we'll go up here, look here. The fireworks is called uh, Fireworks Canvas. And the uh, is called uh, React Circular Progress Bar. Cool. And there's actually, and I know we're, we're getting, uh, we're about 10 minutes away from, uh, from five o'clock. Uh, there's a couple questions. Do you want me to start going into the questions now, Eli, or do you wanna, is there anything else you wanna go over first? Um, the last thing I wanted to show was actually deploying it to a device. Okay. Um, um, but that can take a second to get up and running. So, um, well, actually one of the, one of the questions was related to deploying to Android. So, uh, maybe that would, <laughs> that would work. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So what I'm going to show, so I, am an iPhone user. I got my iPhone right here connected up, ready to go. Um, but what I'm showing here for iOS is very similar, um, for Android as well. And so to do, uh, to do this, we're going to run capacitor. Now, when you start up a new Ionic project, um, it adds capacitor for you by default. 
Um, but then what you want to do is you want to run a command. I've already ran this, so I'm not going to run it here. Um, but you can run ionic cap add iOS or Android or both if you're deploying to both. Um, run, run them one at a time. And what this is going to do, this is going to download the iOS package. It's going to create a new iOS project for you um, that's going to be a part of your um, solution. Um, here, here in your folder, and we do recommend that you check that in. It's one of the biggest differences between Capacitor and Cordova is Capacitor, we want you to But then uh, what you'll do is you can run um, Ionic Cap open iOS or open Android, I'm gonna run iOS, and this will open up um, Xcode. Oh no, just ran this. This might make this a, a non-starter. Hopefully it's not one of the five gigabyte downloads that we like to do. <laughs> and I just ran this like a couple hours ago, so it shouldn't be too bad. Let's try it again. There we go. Okay. And so this will um, open up, um, open up Xcode for you. And then from here to deploy it to your device or not, you deploy it just like any, any iOS app, or if you're doing Android, this can open up Android studio and you deploy it to devices from here. And so anything negative that you're going to do, you're going to do from within the actual uh, tools themselves, not from Dianic command line or anything like that. And let's see, I think I have, a quick time player up here showing my screen. And so if you come over here, I can, I might have to set a couple of things in the project. So kid point, okay, that's already set. Patrol and film. Let's go ahead and just try and run it and see what it does. Complain about something. How can that be opened? Let me try cleaning it here real quick. I was doing some weird stuff with source control earlier, so. All right, well, like I said, I was doing some weird stuff with source control earlier. I mean, I accidentally deleted something. I should have the one that I did earlier already here on my screen. All right, so, so just to kind of show you um, what it's like on the actual device. And so you can see I got, I'm, I'm actually doing this on my phone. And so I'll take my picture. Here we go, and I got the picture here, you know, Eli and Michael. I got a big goal. I got like, you know, 12 and <laughs> whatnot. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's cool. Um, and that's the demo. Um, so as you can see here, I, uh, one, one of the things I hope that I showed you was that you just use your existing React skills, your existing web development skills. You got this vast, um, ecosystem of stuff that you can pull in to help you develop your applications. Um, it's not learning a whole new platform or anything like that when you start developing with Ionic React. Let's hop back into the slides here real quick. Yeah, that's what we called it. Uh, I did want to give a shout out to Deck Deck Do Go. And so this presentation that um, we're seeing here that I used um, is actually a Ionic application written in Stencil.js. Um, and it's built by one of our community members um, and he runs a company called Deck Deck Go. And so if uh, you're looking for a slide presentation or anything like that, uh, get it a try. It was actually a real pleasure to use. You can see it's just uh, web technologies as well. And then with that, uh, I've got a couple of resources here for you. Um, our getting started guide uh, for React. Um, so you can check this out and uh, it's a tutorial based guide to get up and running with your first React application. Um, if you're looking for the code for today's demo, um, I got that up on GitHub. Um, you can find it there. And then if you ever want to uh, find me, um, 
search me out. I'm on all the social networks at Eli Lucas. Awesome. All right. So, all right. So thank you, Eli. So yeah, I think that, that was fantastic. And there's been a, actually a lot of chatter in the, uh, in the chat room um, as you were presenting. So if you don't mind, I'm going to kick us off with some questions here. And if anyone has any questions I don't cover here, please, uh, you know, now's the time to post them. So um, Eli, so from Samsung, uh, we have a question, uh, please, I want can I use and also vice versa in Ionic React. Um, or I'm sorry, just Ionic in general, because if you're using Material, I'm not too sure if there's a React wrapper around it, but generally people use Angular Material. Um, so if you're running an Angular project, it is possible to uh, use them both together. Um, but I would check to see, like, do, do you need to, if like you're just showing buttons or whatnot, we probably already have you covered. Cool. All right, and uh, from Lars Bloomberg, what are the necessary steps to turn the Ionic, uh, to turn your Ionic app into a PWA, or is the app PWA by default? Um, so it's pretty much a PWA by default. So what you'll do um, inside of your React application, you'll just run npm run build um, to uh, build the app, um, all the web assets for it, and then you can go into, and I'll go back to code here real quick. Um, here in the index file, move these over. Um, so this, this is basically, you know, a default, uh, a stock create React app. And so what you do here is you'll call register instead of on register uh, when you go to deploy it to production. And this will fire up the service worker for you. And from there, you pretty much have, you know, a basic bare bones uh, PD, PWA up and running. Uh, if you wanted to go more advanced um, with your service worker or whatnot, you're allowed to do like anything custom um, that you can do here. But yeah, as soon as you um, do an NPM run build and it um, pumps out those web assets into the build folder, you just basically take that build folder and upload it to whatever host that you're using. Okay, cool. And let's see here. If I deployed it as a PWA, would this allow the user to install the PWA onto their home screen? Um, as long as you meet all the criteria and the web browser supports it, um, yeah, um, you can definitely um, definitely do that. Okay, cool. And I know this won't, we won't have time to, to do this today, but um, where could the people find uh, like instructions on how to run on Android emulator? Um, so hit our docs, ionic framework forward slash, or ionic framework.com forward slash docs. And um, if you go to the getting started guide that I had linked um, here, uh, we have a section that talks about um, uh, deploying to both uh, iOS and And uh, I don't know how to pronounce your name. I apologize if I'm, if I'm butchering it. Uh, Gam Gamalil uh, is asking, which VS code do you recommend to use for Ionic and React? Um, my, the main VS code? <laughs> I'm not too sure what he means there. Uh, you're talking about like VS code extensions, maybe? Um, it might be, yeah. Yeah. Um, really, uh, I don't. Um, use any particular extensions to um, for Ionic React that I wouldn't use with any other web development project. Um, yeah, so I don't have any in particular extensions I would recommend that are Ionic React specific. Okay. Uh, and then Jonathan Fernandez uh, wanted to know, why does the Ionic CLI doesn't include commands to generate components and services uh, for Ionic slash React, like the ones for Ionic slash Angular? Well, um, that is because for Angular projects, what we do is we call into um, the uh, Angular CLI, which includes uh, schematics uh, to generate those types of components. React doesn't have the, we use create React app. It's kind of what's analogous to the Angular CLI, except it, it doesn't have nearly the um, features that the Angular CLI does. And one of the, one of the things that it doesn't have is, is any type of schematics or code generation. Um, so we actually have been playing around with the idea. It's like, well, we could use the Angular schematics uh, to do this as well, to generate uh, React components. Mm -hmm. That's completely possible. Um, and so we are toying around with the idea, but uh, basically the, the reason 
the main reason is is because that is actually an underlying feature of Angular um, that React create React app doesn't have. Okay, gotcha. Uh, I think the community would be pretty excited about that. Actually, <laughs> that sounds yeah. pretty cool. Uh, okay, Mark uh, Ziss is uh, commiserating with you that he said that he's he's never gotten anything to work the first two times with Xcode. So <laughs> <laughs> no, it's 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 a pain. That's for sure. Yeah. Yeah. When I opened it up this morning, I've already had to wait a half an hour for it to install all those, all those updates and stuff that yeah. some new iOS version got released. So you have to wait a while. Yeah. Uh, okay. We have from uh, first one is. Cordova plugins with capacitor plugins. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, so if, if you already have an Ionic app using Cordova, um, yes, you can uh, you, uh, use capacitor with it as well. We pretty much have um, full um, backwards compatibility inside a capacitor with Cordova components. And so I think, I think we had a blog post a couple months ago that went through and talked about how to do this. So uh, look up our blog, ionicframework.com slash blog and go back a couple of pages. Um, where we're talking about something capacitor, but um, yeah, it's usually a, fair, a fairly straightforward process to move over from Cordova to capacitor. Okay, all right, awesome. Um, Mark uh, has an arc, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, let's see, can I use Angular with capacitors? I think the answer was yes there. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and then we also have another question. Is there any compelling reason to go with React over Angular aside from language experience? Um, I mean, I, I would say that it, it's going to depend on you and your team. There's nothing that you can't do in Ionic Angular that you can't do in Ionic React and vice versa. Performance-wise, I mean, that's all, they're basically the same. That's all down to what's happening inside of Ionic Core. Um, so it comes down to like, what, what do you like? What, what's your, what's your uh, preference um, for the most part? Um, yeah. yeah. Cool. And I think we only have five questions left. We're doing so good. <laughs> All right. So um, let's see. One of the questions by Salva is uh, when will Ionic Gestures be ready? Ionic Gestures. So Ionic Gestures is ready. Um, it came out as a part of Ionic V5 uh, a couple months ago. And so uh, I know we haven't um, talked a whole lot about it yet. Um, but the new gestures API and the new animations API is out. Um, we got docs around it and we got a couple of blog posts, um, but we're working on putting together some more content as well. So yeah, go check that out. We're extremely excited about it. Okay, cool. Uh, from Claudio, uh, because of Ionic's components are imported, does that make for a leaner implementation of Ionic? And does that lead to smaller bundle sizes? Um, no, not really, because of the way that um, even when you're using like Angular, uh, we always lazy load our components at runtime. And so the components aren't um, even loaded until they're first requested. And so they're not included in the initial bundle in either framework. Okay, cool. And let's see, uh, does Ionic Capacitor run a native web view which holds your app or in what context does the web code run? Yes, and so we uh, so on iOS we use a WK or WK WebView or whatever the newest one is called. They keep renaming it. I never keep track of it, um, but yeah, it uses a WebView on both iOS and Android um, to um, run your app inside of. Okay, uh, and then the third, the last one from Samsung. Which tool were you using to copy the snippets? Um, so that is a extension that I have inside of VS Code. I find it extremely helpful for presentations. Uh, let's see what it's called. Uh, it's not snippet creator. Which one is it? Code fragments. So it's this one right here. Um, so this this basically allows me like when I, I can select a piece of code. just click on it to insert it. Cool. All right, fantastic. And if you can actually send me that link after when you, once you send a write up, because uh, what we'll do is we'll post this online for everyone and then uh, any like relevant, you know, links uh, or tools that, you know, are being mentioned, uh, you know, we'll link out to you guys, so don't worry. Um, and I guess the last uh, question 
is actually like a two part question. So one person asks, uh, they would love to hear more about the plugin community and pricing. And then uh, another person asked something similar, which is, is the Ionic UI framework necessary to use the, uh, Ion the other Ionic products such as Capacitor, Native, Outflow? So could you just talk a little bit about the, uh, the community in general and like the products and how it all ties in? Sure. Um, so th there's a project out there called Ionic Native, and I mentioned that a little bit in the um, in the notes. And there and there's two flavors of Ionic Native. There is a community-based plugin one, where all the plugins are written by uh, members of the community, and um, we we kind of aggregate them together into Ionic Native. Um, and you can find a lot of the stuff that you can need for those. Those are 100% uh, free. This is where, um, because, because the other one is community-based, you know, sometimes with open source projects, sometimes they could get abandoned or sometimes like new OSs can come out and they need to be fixed and, and whatnot. And what we're noticing is that they, those weren't always being updated anymore, like they're kind of being abandoned um, in some cases. And so we offer Ionic Native Enterprise Edition where we maintain um, the plugins and we offer support around the plugins. So if you're an enterprise and you're looking for, you know, enterprise, enterprise type support around your plugins, um, you can, I think that is a, like a yearly subscription service. I don't have pricing on it. If um, you're interested in pricing, you can um, shoot me a message. I can get you in touch with um, somebody from uh, the sales team that can chat with you. Um, but yeah, but besides that, like I said, the uh, community version one is always 100% free and open source. And then we do also have a couple of like what we would call premium plugins that we offer as well. These usually have to do around with like enterprise authentication, enterprise security, um, stuff that you, um, as like an individual or any dev that uh, you probably wouldn't need or want, but as an enterprise, it could save you like tons and tons of times tons and tons of time of like implementing like an authentication system or something like that. Uh, what was the second part again? Uh, the second part was just like how the products intermingle. Can you use one product without another? Oh, okay. Yeah. And absolutely. And so um, you can definitely use, I mean, Ionic without capacitor um, and just like, you know, host it as a web app or you can use a capacitor without Ionic as well. So if you have another um, app out there um, that is a mobile friendly um, app that you wanna deploy up, um, you can just you know tell capacitor what build folder the assets are in and capacitor will take it and insert it into an app just like it was an Ionic app. Cool, all right. And uh, I think the last question would be uh, from me, which would be, you know, what are you, uh, most excited for is coming next, either in Ionic or in the app ecosystem. Um, so I'm, I'm right now. I'm um, really working on some um, huge improvements to um, the React, um, the Ion React router. Um, that's inside of that, along with some complementary uh, services that are come along with it that I can't quite talk about yet. Um, but it's something that the community has been asking for for a long time in the React ecosystem. Um, that we're going to get out there and we'll probably probably hear something about that within the next few weeks. Uh, so, you know, stay tuned to our blog uh, for that. Um, like after that, a view uh, person, we hear you. <laughs> we, know, uh, we know that um, we got a beta version of Ionic View out there and it's been out there for quite a while. Um, so it's kind of, um, on our periphery radar to um, start um, digging into that again as well and whatnot. Um, yeah, tons of stuff going on, but we are, we are a small company and there's only so much we can do at once, but we hear you. Cool. And then we yeah, have, with that said, you know, please, uh, for everyone who's watching, you know, please reach out to Eli, you reach out to the community. I, I think it's fair to say that the more you guys hear requests from the community, the, the higher priority it becomes, right? <laughs> right. Yeah. So yeah, so this is this is fantastic, Eli. Thank you so much. Uh, I, I heard I saw some people saying that they're applauding uh, for you since you know, we can't do it in person right now. <laughs> yeah, it's um, def definitely a different type of experience doing a virtual meetup. But yeah, it was a lot of fun. I appreciate you having me. Um, excited to be here and I hope you all go out and uh, check out Ionic React. 
Cool, cool. And, uh, you know, last uh, kind of closing remarks for everyone who's listening. Like I said in the beginning, uh, you know, the next meetup is going to be Ionic and Phaser. Um, we will email everyone uh, after the uh, after this meetup, probably by tomorrow, uh, with a recap of the meetup and the, the content and the presentation by Eli. Uh, and then also, um, you know, it's recorded, so we'll also post a video. So uh, if you came in like, you know, halfway and you missed some of it, you can always go back. Uh, so yeah, thanks everyone for attending. Thanks, Eli, and enjoy the rest of your week. Awesome. Thanks, everyone.